To get the full course, visit www.zdub.com. Hello guys, welcome to this Certified Ethical Hacking course. So let's move to our course agenda. We will be covering a lot in this course, starting from introduction to lab setup, then footprinting and reconnaissance, scanning networks, enumeration, vulnerability analysis, system hacking, malware analysis, sniffing, social engineering, denial of service, session hijacking, evading IDS, firewalls and hotspots. We will also be covering hacking web servers and web applications, SQL injection, hacking wireless networks, hacking mobile platform, IoT and OT hacking, cloud computing and at last cryptography. So first of all, let's talk about Certified Ethical Hacker course. The Certified Ethical Hacker, you can also say it as CEH. It is a credential in, in the most and the most trusted ethical hacking certification course. And it is also recommended by most of the employers globally. CEH version 11 is the latest version that we are going to cover in this course and which continues to evolve the latest operating system, tools, tactics, exploits and technologies. A certified ethical hacker is a specialist typically working in a red team environment focused on attacking computer systems and gaining access to network application database and many other critical data on secured systems. So let's start our course from here that is information security. So let's uh, say that what is information security? A state of well-being of information and infrastructure in which the possibility of theft, tampering and disruption of information and services is kept as low as possible. So in information security, we are just securing the information and all the data that it surrounds. There are some elements of information security, or we can say that these are the goals of cybersecurity. So first of all, it is confidentiality. So what is confidentiality? It protects information from unauthorized access and misuse. So confidentiality is just basically securing our privacy and not leaking that privacy to other users or unauthorized users. Second is integrity. Integrity is that which protects our information from unauthorized alteration. What is alteration? Alteration is something that uh, that our information is not changed in between. If we are transferring our data from sender to receiver, then the information is not altered in between. Third is availability. So now what is availability? Availability is that it protects timely and uninterrupted access to the system. Are all resources that we have kept on a some place that they are accessible to us anytime we want. Next is authentication. Authentication is a process of recognizing a user's identity. So the page, the login page that we see in the Facebook or any other platform. So those pages that where we have to put our username and our password. So those are authentication pages. Okay. And, and where and the, the page where the user identifies its information or identity that is authentication. At last it is non repudiation. Non repudiation is the assurance that someone cannot deny something. It means that if I have sent some uh, some information to any other person so that person cannot deny that i have sent that information to him or her so this is non reputation so these are the goals of information security now let's move to information assurance it can also be called as ia which refers to assurance of confidentiality integrity availability non reputation and authentication of information system during usage, processing, storage and transmission of information. 
so information and on any stage that is it is being used or it is being processed or it is at a safe place so we have to assure that that information is confidentiality and integrity availability non repudiation and authentication it can be assured or it can be uh, focused with the help of some points that i am going to cover now, now that is develop local policies processes and guidance next identifying network vulnerability and threats if we identify all the network vulnerabilities in our system in our computer system or in the information system so we are going to assure that our information is safe and secure and the last is providing information assurance training at any point of time and any life stage we have to provide training to others so that their information can be secured now let's talk about the security functionality and usability triangle so what is functionality the set of features provided by the system so these are the just the features that the system a system is providing to us okay so it is the functionality next is usability usability is the graphical user interface components used to design the system for ease of use so it is just how much easy something for us to use so it is it comes under usability and the last is part is security security is the restrictions imposed on accessing the components of system so it is the security part that uh, that our system is providing us so this triangle covers a lot the relationship between these three components is demonstrated by using a triangle because increase or decrease in any one of the component automatically affects the other two components so if we want to increase the security then we have to lose ease of use and functionality and vice versa in all three cases now let's move to hacking hacking refers to exploiting vulnerabilities and compromising security controls to gain unauthorized access or inappropriate access to system resources so this is what the main focus of this course is that we have to stop the process of hacking and we have to just um, use this as a good person okay so hacking is just exploiting vulnerabilities and compromising security controls and to gain unauthorized access in appropriate to other system resources the motive behind hacking could be to steal critical information or services for thrill security curiosity knowledge financial gain power and vengeance so these are the motives that uh, someone performs hacking on other target systems or other information hacking can be constructive and destructive it all depends on the one person who is performing that now the main question is who is a hacker and if, if we ask most people to define the term hacker and they will instantly picture a darkened room several monitors with green text scrolling across the screen and a shady character in the corner so these are just the few terms that define a hacker but they are all correct okay so let's go to its definition that is intelligent individual with excellent computer skills and has the ability to explore into the computer software and hardware so he is a person who is very very intelligent and has excellent computer skills and he also has the ability to explore into computer software and hardware he knows everything about computer software and hardware so he can just get into your system and perform actions so is it is a person who perf who breaks into a system or network without any authorization to destroy steal sensitive information or to perform malicious task so it is not a good person who enters into your system and performs some uh, stealing task or destroy your data a skilled individual with enough knowledge to discover vulnerabilities in a target system so he is also a skilled individual with enough knowledge to discover vulnerabilities in the target system so based on all the vulnerabilities 
he perform all these actions types of hacker first one is white hat hacker who is white hat hacker white hat hacker is the ethical hacker the main focus of this course they can only hack the systems that they have permission to hack in order to test the security of the system so white hat hacker is the one who ask for permissions and then he hacks the system okay so uh, it is a white hat hacker now let's move to another type that is black hat hackers these people hack the system illegally to steal money or to achieve their goals illegal goals so these are the black hat hackers who are just uh, accessing the system or hacking into the system without taking permission of the owner second uh, third one is gray hat hacker gray hat hacker are the one who hack the system even they don't have permission to test the security of the system but they will never steal the money or damage the system so these are the uh, gray hat hackers are the combination of white hat and black hat hackers so they perform uh, hacking also but they don't misuse that information or they don't damage the system fourth point is script kiddies script kiddies are those amateur hackers that try to hack the system with scripts from other fellow hackers so so they just copy the uh, stuff available on globally available on uh, open resources and they just try to perform those hacks or those task on the live environment fifth type is hacktivist hacktivist is an individual or a bunch of nameless hackers whose intent is to gain access to government websites and networks so hacktivist is a is an individual who just against the who is just against the government and their website and that person gains access into the in information and they perform their own task sixth is state sponsored hackers state sponsored hacker is a hacker who um, who is appointed by government and he uses that and the government uses that hacker to gain confidential information from the other countries so the uh, state sponsored hackers are appointed by government and they help government to gain confidential information about other countries seventh point is suicide hackers suicide hacker is an individual who bring down critical infrastructure for a cause and are not worried about facing any type of punishment so they are not they are just uh, like so they are just ready to suicide themselves or they are just ready to uh, they are not afraid of any punishment or any type of judgment so they are just they will just perform their action and they will not uh, worry about the after effects of it the last is cyber terrorists so these are the individuals with wide range of skills motivated by religion or political beliefs to create fear by large scale disruption of computer networks so these are the terrorist groups that perform their actions and they are very skilled and they mo they are motivated by religion or political beliefs and they perform large scale disruption of computer networks so let's move further now we have phases of hacking so let's see what are phases of hacking first it is reconnaissance or we can also call it footprinting so what is reconnaissance and footprinting so it is just information gathering phase so in this phase we will just gain the information or as much information as about our target we can gain second phase is scanning scanning is all about identifying ports or network map about of the target organization so this is this all comes under scanning gaining access is the main system hacking concept of hacking so system hacking is all about uh, gaining access into the system and performing tasks that we are here to perform maintaining access is the another is uh, another step 
that we are going to cover in this course so uh, maintaining access is all about an uh, attacker the foothold he can hold there in the system how much long he can wait and maintain his his access into the system and the final step is clearing tracks clearing track is all about clearing log files and all the footprints that he left in the target system so that he cannot be backtracked or he cannot be identified by the target so these all are the phases of hacking that we are going to focus in this course we will cover each and every one each and every point each and every phase in very detail okay let's move further what is ethical hacking it is very 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 important term so we will cover it here it refers to the act of locating weakness and vulnerabilities of computer and information system by duplicating the intent and actions of malicious hacker so ethical hacking involves an unauthorized attempt to gain sorry ethical hacking involves an authorized attempt to gain unauthorized access to a computer system application or data this prax this practice helps to identify security vulnerabilities which can then be resolved before a malicious attacker has the opportunity to exploit them proper permission is obtained from the target and hence it is legal so ethical hacking is all legally approved by any organization and the ethical hacker took the permission of the organization or the target company and then he performs or hacks into their system to identify security vulnerabilities i have covered a law a, a word that is vulnerabilities so i would like to explain it here vulnerability are the uh, vulnerabilities are the uh, weaknesses or um, the hole or bug or something that that can be exploited or that can be uh, exploited by the attacker so vulnerability is the weakness of the system so the task of ethical hacker is to identify those vulnerabilities and patch them so that attacker cannot exploit them now let's talk about ethical hackers ethical hackers use their knowledge to secure and improve the technology of organizations they provide an essential service to these organizations by looking for vulnerabilities that can lead to a security breach so ethical hacker has a lot of knowledge and he just uses that he just utilizes that knowledge to secure and improve the technology of an particular organization these are also known as white hat hackers i have already told about it them that white hat hackers took permission of the target organization and then they perform the hacking or ethical hacking these are employed by organizations to perform penetration test penetration test is that just exploiting all the vulnerabilities and keep on patching them so that attacker cannot uh, have utilized them or use them to hack into their systems an ethical hacker reports the identified vulnerabilities to the organization and also provides remediation advice now there are different concepts in ceh so we are going to cover them here first is defense in depth so what is defense in depth a security strategy in which several protection layers are placed throughout an information system so it is just a layered security that we provide to our data as you can see that in this figure the data is at center and it is surrounded by different layers or different uh, mechanisms to for their protection so at topmost we have parameter parameters are the physical security that we provide to secure our data then we have network security here we will apply firewalls ids honey pots etc then we have host on host we can deploy antiviruses firewalls and other host ids is okay then we have application we can also provide application security 
and there are different applications which provide their own security and then we have data the final point or the uh, main goal of an attacker to gain okay so we have to secure our data so this is a defense in, def defense in depth approach now we will cover risk so what is a risk risk refers to a degree of uncertainty or expectations that an adverse event may cause damage to the system so risk can be defined through a formula that is risk equals to threats into vulnerabilities into impact threats are the attacks on the system vulnerabilities are its weaknesses and impact is all over the impact what it causes after the exploitation so it is it all is it it all covers under risk so it is a relationship between threat vulnerabilities and impact the risk matrix scales the risk occurrence probability along with its consequences or impact as i told earlier that it is a multiplication of threat vulnerabilities and impact so risk matrix is a scale it scales the risk occurrence probabilities now we have risk management the process of producing or reducing and maintaining risk at an acceptable level by means of a well defined and actively employed security program so it is a process of reducing and maintaining risk there are some phases on under risk management so first is risk identification in this phase we identify the risk then we have risk assessment after identification of the risk we will assessment we will perform an assessment on it so that we can understand what is the risk and how what is the probability of that risk then we have risk treatment risk treatment is that we the 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 outcome of that risk so we can treat that so that it does not mean it does not perform a lot much risk to our organization then we have risk tracking risk tracking comes after risk treatment which tells us about the after performing to treatment to the risk so the risk is gone or it is um, evacuated or it is ejected or not and or it is still in there and the last is risk review after performing all the above steps we will just review the risk so that we can confirm that it has been ejected or it has been excluded from the system next we have incident management incident management is a set of defined processes to identify analyze prioritize and resolve resolve security incidents to restore normal service operations as quickly as possible and prevent future recurrences of that incident so incident management just manages all the incident all all the security incidents that are that are on in particular organization so what is the process of incident management first step is preparation in this step we will just prepare all the documents all the trainings and all are all covered under this preparation step so we are pre we prepare ourselves for the incident next step is detection and analysis if an incident occurs then we can we have the capability to detect and analyze it so it comes under detection and analysis next is containment eradication and recovery containment eradication and recovery these are the post uh, incident phases in which we contain that uh, that incident and we uh, just decrease its risk to our organization and we also recover ourselves from that risk or from that incident fourth point is post event activity what is post event activity post event activities are those activities that we perform after the containment eradication and recovery step after the incident has been happened and we contained it and then we will 
just look into the incident and which we will look into the reports of the containment eradication and detection and analysis and we will just update ourselves for the next incident that is going to occur so these are all the post event activities that we that incident management performs next is security incident and event management siem it is the root of soc that is security operation centers so siem perform real time soc functions like identifying monitoring recording auditing and analyzing security incidents so siem is very important part when we have the when we perform logging and logging collection and analysis of the logs so that we can just perform we can just manage or analyze the incidents and events happening into our organization what are the functions of siem first is log collection then log analysis then event correlation log monitoring log forensics and real time alerting so these are all the functions of siem so it is all based on logs events incidents that are happening or that are generating in, into our organization now we have penetration testing so what is penetration testing practice of testing a computer system network or web application to find security vulnerabilities that an attacker could exploit so it is a practice of testing a computer system and getting into the system or network and then we have to apply the security patches so that attacker could not exploit it penetration test or pen testing exposes the gap in the security model of an organization the results are delivered comprehensively in a report to executive management and technical audiences so penetration test is performed and then we have to submit the report of it what are the types of penetration testing first is black box the tester has no idea about the system and he that he is going to test so black box testing is all about that the tester has no knowledge about the target so he will gather the information himself and then he will test the system second is white box testing white box box testing under white box testing tester has been provided with whole range of information about the system or the network so in this um, type of text testing the attack the tester is provided with all the information about the target system and the network so he will not gather the information he will just perform testing onto it third is gray box so what is gray box gray box testing and uh, comes when tester usually provides usually provides partial or limited information about the internal details of the program of a system so in this gray box the tester is provided with partial or limited information about the internal uh, internal details of the program or the organization so he will gather more information about uh, the organization himself so at last we have the phases of penetration testing so what are the phases of penetration testing so we have three phases first is pre attack phase pre attack phase is all about planning and preparation we will just plan and be prepared for the attack we have to design the methodologies and we will get, gather a lot information so that we are just prepared for the attack second phase is attack phase in under this phase it all comes like parameter uh, penetration parameter penetrating parameter so we will just penetrate the parameters or all the security patches or all the vulnerabilities we will just penetrate them we will acquire the target and we will escalate privileges third is post attack phase under this phase we will perform reporting clean up restore and analyzing of results so these are the phases of penetration testing thank you
Hello guys welcome back to our course In today's lecture we are going to cover footprinting and reconnaissance so let's start So what is footprinting and reconnaissance These both terms are same Footprinting is the first step of an any attack in which an attacker gathers information about its target system or network to identify various ways to intrude into the system so footprinting is basically the first step that we we have discussed in the introduction lecture that in which the attacker gains information about the system or the target network with the help of proper footprinting we can obtain the blueprint of the security profile of the target organization a hacker need to gather all the crucial information about the target organization before beginning the hacking phase so it is a very basic it is a very important step that an attacker or an hacker needs to take in in process to uh, perform hacking so what are the types of footprinting the, there are two types of footprinting first is active footprinting and second one is passive footprinting in active footprinting as the name suggests that the attacker involves gathering information about the target with direct interaction so in active footprinting the attacker directly interacts with the target social engineering and other communication that requires in interaction with target so they, this is all comes under active footprinting in which the attacker directly interacts with the target and in and there he performs social engineering and other communication techniques like some tools he can interact with the target now let's discuss about passive footprinting so it involves gathering information about the target without direct interaction so in, in passive footprinting the attacker do not directly interact with the target he gathers the information from publicly available resources like google or facebook or some other public available resources now what are the informations that we obtain or an attacker obtain from footprinting so there are three major informations that he gathers first is organizational information in organizational informational as the name suggests that it gathers the information about the organization like employee details their phone numbers the location and branch details of the organization their website links partners of the organization and legal documents related to the to the organization so these all are the main uh, information that we gather in the footprinting step second is network information so what all network information an attacker can gather in footprinting he can gather like subdomains or domains network topology how many routers are there which type of firewalls are there ip addresses mac addresses os records and dns records so these all informations he gather in the footprinting step we will discuss all these information in uh, in detail in later later courses now the third one is system information the system information are the information about the system like operating system web server um, versions username and passwords of the web server or operating system and the location of their web servers so these all the information that an attacker can gather from footprinting what are the objectives of footprinting so there are four objectives of main four objectives of footprinting the first one is no security posture it means that the attacker got to know about the security posture of an organization he gather information related to that security posture and he draws a mat network map so that he can understand the network and he can plan accordingly third is identify vulnerabilities he can identify vulnerabilities using footprinting and he can perform those actions and he can exploit those vulnerabilities in the later step of uh, system hacking and the fourth one is reduce focus area obviously it will reduce the focus area of the attacker or the hacker so that he can just focus on the main things and rest he can leave 
now let's move to footprinting techniques so what are the techniques that uh, that uh, through which we can uh, perform footprinting so there are many techniques and many services we use and when many protocols on which we perform footprinting so we will discuss them gradually the first one is footprinting through web engines or through search engines so what are the search engines and what information we can gather through them so we will see in this step like we can gather information from google or bing or yahoo duckduckgo and we can use advanced google hacking techniques and obviously we can use shodan also to gather information about the target next is footprinting through web services web services are some some web services like uh, pen test tools netcraft who is and other web services that we can use to perform footprinting next is footprinting through social networking sites so there are lots of information that we found on social networking sites like facebook instagram linkedin twitter and we can use some tools like the harvester or we can use other tools to gather information through these social networking sites next is website put footprinting so uh the content that that are there on the website of a particular organization or the target organization we can gather the information from their websites also and there are some tools like sttrack and wget through which we can clone the website so we will perform all that in the later uh, videos of this course next is email footprinting in email footprinting we gather the email addresses of the employees of that particular organization that we are that 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 the attacker is targeting so he will gather all the information about their emails or he can just look into the headers of their those emails and he can gather information accordingly next is who is footprinting in this he will gather the who is information like which domain they are uh, their their website is built on or what are the ip addresses the the website is using to perform the domain name okay so he will the gather the or those informations in the who is footprinting next we have dns footprinting so dns is domain name system so he will uh, gather the information about the domain names and the mail records mail exchange records and the and different types of that domain names or the uh, domain name servers so he will gather information through them also he will use the tool like ns lookups to perform dns footprinting and the last is network footprinting so for network footprinting there are some tools through which we can identify ip addresses that are live on a particular network or which all mac addresses are there or which all mac addresses are live in the particular network so all these techniques are used to perform footprinting we will see all these in the practical sessions and i will perform all these the all the practicals in the later section of this course now let's move further to competitive intelligence gathering so what is competitive intelligence gathering we will see now the process of identifying gathering analyzing verifying and using information about your competitors from your resources so if we are in a business there are many competitors that surrounds us so we will just identify gather information about them analyze and verify the different information about our competitors through different resources understanding and learning about other businesses to become as competitive as possible as i said that to become the best in the market we have to perform reconnaissance also so that we can gather information about other businesses competitive intelligence gathering can be performed using a direct or indirect approach if we directly interact with the other organization which is our competitive which is our competition so that we, so that we can gather information through them and we can also indirectly uh, perform uh, footprinting so that we can gather information about the target organization so what are the countermeasures or how we can prevent ourselves from footprinting we will see that first point is configure web services servers to avoid information leakage so we will configure our web servers so that the information cannot be leaked second is educate employees to use pseudonym pseudonyms on blogs groups and forums 
limit the amount of information published on website and internet obviously we have to limit the amount of information that is published on our website or on other websites or internet so that the information cannot be leaked train employees to thwart social engineering techniques and attacks obviously training is the main key through which we can secure ourselves we can opt for privacy services on who is lookup database so that the who is the lookup database do not reveal our information on a global plat platform we can also place critical documents such as business plans and proprietary documents offline to prevent explo exploitation and last point is ensure that no critical information is displayed on notice boards and walls of our organization so that the attacker could not see those information and gather it so i guess footprinting is all clear and now we will see in next uh, next videos how we can perform footprinting thank you hello guys welcome back in this video i am going to demonstrate that how we can perform footprinting using search engines so let's start so now we are going to use some search engines to gather some information about our target so let's take a target for example first of all we are here in yahoo search okay so this is a website for yahoo search and i am going to search something here so that i can gather some information about my target so let's type zdub technologies and see what we can get here's the website official website of zdub so let's open it so here we can gather some information like for example if we want to search for its location so then we can go to contact us and here are the contact details email and address of the company and what are the platforms they are using and what are the events they are they are organizing they, that all is mentioned here so we can use search engines like yahoo or we can use bing also for that same purpose here also we can type zdub shown here in which the zdub.com come comes okay so if i'm going to click on this so here also there will be a there will be a link which is going to redirect me on to zdub.com okay so 
this is the use of this link tag okay so you can also see that mm -hmm. so you can also see that the number of results is very less if i'm going to type this only and if i'm going to remove it and then i will press enter you can see the number of results are much much more than that okay and after performing that i will going to get less results okay so this was the first tag next i am going to type site and then colon remember that this colon is very important okay you have to type this flag and then colon and then without giving any space you have to type the search that you want to perform okay so i am going to hit enter and you will see that there are very less number of results and what this uh, site flag is going to do it will just restrict the results to those websites in the given domain okay so it will just restrict the search into this domain only so you can see all the websites that are shown on to all these searches it will just lead to zdub.com and else nowhere okay so you will find all these websites which leads to zdub.com only okay so i guess it is clear so let's let's move on to another tag that is in title okay so in title after that i have to uh, put again colon and what i am going to uh, write in in title uh, for example if i am going to type training okay so what it will be do it will be doing just i am going to show wait um if i am going to open this link okay so in the uh, title menu or in the title bar i am going to see the word training so all do these websites which are shown here and uh, all these results are going to are going to are uh, all these results have training in their title okay so this is the meaning of this training uh, in title tag okay so if i am going to type here something like uh, uh, food okay and i am i am going to hit enter so it will all these results just show me that um, the the uh, food in their title you can see that here also the food is mentioned okay so this tag will help you to uh, search in the title okay so next is in url so what this you in url going to perform it will restrict the results to documents containing the search keyword okay in the url so uh, in url is going to uh, for, for example if i am if i want uh, zed in my url okay so i have to uh, so when i will hit enter so it will just show those page just wait mm, traffic lights okay now i am verified so you can see that in url z so uh, just let me open any url so in this url you can see that z is coming okay so the word that you mention here it will come in all the pages of this url okay so let me go to uh, another tag that is location okay so in this location tag what this tag is going to do let me put colon here and let me put like uh, chennai okay so it will restrict the search in the the provided location only okay so the location that i have provided it will just restrict the search up to this this area only for example if i want to search any training centers for example i am going to write training centers and location i have put uh, chennai okay so it will just restrict the results to to the 
training centers in the in the in chennai okay so you can see that all these results will show the training centers in chennai okay so this is what this location tag will perform there is one more tag that is file type okay so this file type tag will just restrict the results to those files that we want for example if we want to capture pdf files only okay then first of all let me write write something here for example uh, save earth okay if you if you want to search uh, pdf files on this topic that that is save earth so i'm going to hit enter and you will see that um, all these you can see that here it is pdf file only and all these results will be will be shown that it is a pdf file if we will go to any number of pages and you will see that all these files will be your pdf files and your results are very less numbers okay then the usual results i hope you understand this okay so this is the this is what is called google docs or advanced google search okay or advanced google hacking so let me move to my last search engine that is shodan i guess you have heard of it the the search engine for security you can see it here for buildings for iot devices for web it is the search engine for hackers only so you you so that you can find all the internet of things here only okay for example if i want to gather information about windows system okay so i'm going to write windows 7 for example and i'm going to hit enter and let it search okay so now you can see that there are some multiple ips that you have found here of windows 7 only okay you can see the number of ips here so let me open any one so the location of the this ip is uh, osaka japan okay and uh, you will see some of the ha uh, this is very important that you will see the vulnerabilities of that machine okay and this machine is currently live and you can perform some Uh, some ethical hacking over it and you can just report it to the particular user so these all are the vulnerabilities that are there in this windows 7 machine whose ip is 13.208. this and this okay so what is this cv number okay so let me just give a brief give a little brief about it so this uh, cv is common vulnerability exposure and uh, it 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 just define the vulnerabilities of a particular year okay so this is the number of the year that is 2018th vulnerability and this is the number of the vulnerability in the 2018 year okay so uh, this vulnerability was 10549th vulnerability of 2018 okay i guess you you have understand and this is a little description about it okay you can further uh, read about it in the google or in the any search engine okay so these all 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 are the vulnerabilities that are that is there in this windows machine and it is currently live okay and these all are ports open that these all are ports open in this windows machine okay so you can perform much more tasks like for example if i want to show you some live webcams okay so you are going to see them through this tag okay so let me pull it it, it is it is written that jpg pull.htm okay i'm going to hit enter and you will see some of the live webcams here okay just wait okay so you can see that some of the live live ip is there so let me click on any ip let's see what it shows and it is it is currently in frankenmuth and uh, uh, which is a state which is a city in united states okay so all these ports are open in this ip and let let me just open the camera okay so you can see that the jpg.htm it it is written here okay so it is just a, a syntax or a function for live cameras okay so you can see that all these cameras that are sh shown here these all are live webcams okay that are running in the frankenmuth in united states okay you can also see the time that is uh 25th of march 2021 and the time is currently 1:15 pm okay so all these are 1:15 pm so it is the uh, it is a united states time okay 
so you can see all these live cameras okay and the time will also change if you just refresh it or it will gradually change after 10 to 20 seconds okay so you can see all these live images okay so this is what is the search engine that is showdown i hope you have understand how we can perform footprinting using search engines okay so it will just um, fasten our serve and we were able to perform the search very fastly okay i guess you have understood let's meet let's meet you in the next lecture okay thank you hello guys welcome back in this video i'm going to show you that how we can perform footprinting using web services so let's see how we can perform it so what are web services web services are those services that are on the websites or on the web servers okay so first we are going to see netcraft.com it is a website and it is going to demonstrate all the information about it will it will going to show us all the information about the website about the website okay its ip address its uh, servers information which server it is running on and all the who is information dns service information okay so let's see how it how we can perform it okay so i'm going to scroll it down and you are going to see that what what's that site running okay here i am going to type http dot slash colon slash slash zdub dot com and i'm going to hit enter So let's wait for it to search. So it will going to show us the whole re report, site report. Okay. So you can see that uh, this is the title of our uh, website, and uh, the, this is a this description that we have provided here. It was first seen in this, and uh, primary language is English. Domain is zdub.com. name server is this who is information name server is this this is the ip okay we can click on this to perform a virus total search on it okay so that it is you can consider you can see that it is not a blacklisted ip okay this is the ipv6 address reverse dns okay so there is a lot of information that you can find it here this is the ip delegation that uh, which we, the whole range is this and then we have our ip is in this range then it shot downs to this range and the final ip is here okay and the same is for ipv6 address also okay so you can see that the country is united states cause our server is at cloudflare okay so you can see that all the information about it the ssl information the cer certificate transparency okay so you can see all these information and you can search about them so what the all these means and what is the role of each information okay so you can see a lot of information about any particular website okay so we can gather a lot of information from here that is netcraft.com okay so let's move to googleearth.com here we can see the map of a particular place okay so let me zoom it out okay hmm so this is the google earth i can i i guess most of you have used it okay so here the search box where i can search something for example if i want to search uh, something like uh, mm, new delhi okay then i am going to hit enter okay so you will you are going to see that uh, it will shift to new delhi and you will see the information about some you can see the location uh, if you want to search any company then you you can find its location that where it is located and what are the road map and how we can reach there how we can get there or if you want to plan a exit plan then you can also perform the this google earth and you can also use this google earth to see all the that information okay so you can see the parliament of india so all this information you can find it here okay so it is based it is totally uh, for the location purpose or geolocation okay and the last is uh, that is osint framework it is a very 
uh, it is a combination of different uh, foot printing tools and you can find all the foot printing tools here to gather the um, all all sort of information okay so starting from username email address domain name ip address and much more information like phone numbers public records transportation uh, date of birth mobile enumeration so you can find all these information here so let's uh, uh, let's check that uh, if you want to search a phone number then we can click on phone numbers and telephone numbers and you can uh, find a lot of mo lot more options here one of the option is true color also so you can click on this and you can register here or you can search for any no mobile number okay and if you want to search for any username then there are different platforms that you can search username and for email addresses you can search email formats for for example if you want to verify an email address so you can just click on any other platform and uh, here you can type your type your email and you can verify it that it look looks a very it's look it looks a valid email or not okay so it is a combination of different footprinting tools so you can find most most or all of the footprinting tools here in the in the in a particular OSINT framework okay so uh, i guess you have understood that how we can perform footprinting using the web services so these are the different web services that you can use to perform footprinting thank you hello guys welcome back in this video i'm going to demonstrate that how we can perform footprinting using social networking sites and also email footprinting so let's start. So for social networking sites, there are a few like Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram and Twitter. So you can log into your accounts and you can see that how we can uh, and how, how we can gather information about our target person. OK, so for example, if you want to uh, gather information about an employee, the, his date of birth, his or her date of birth or his or her phone number, email address, his address and all this information or you want to look into their post and uh, think about it that what he is going to do and what he is doing there, he is in which location. So all these information, these all information are very crucial information. So you can gather all these information from your Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram and Twitter. So you can just log in to your accounts and you can gather information about a particular person. You will just go to search box and you will just type the name of the person whose information you want to gather. OK, so he, the person must be in the target organization who whom you are targeting. OK, so you can gather all the information using these social networking sites. OK, so what all information you can gather His phone number, his age, his date of date of birth, his address, his phone number his email address all these information you can gather his face how he how he looks okay so all these information you can gather so after covering all these social networking sites i'm going to cover email footprinting okay so for that i'm going to open my email and i'm going to open uh, any any mail that is that came from any place i'm going to click on more and then I'm going to click on show original. So what will this information tell about it? It will tell hold the original message. OK, it will tell whole original message like when it is created from to subject. And even after all this information, you are going to see that uh, what is your SMTP ID and uh, what is the um, um, IPv6 address of that ID? OK, and uh, uh, what is the received from? You, this is the uh, server from where you have received this mail. OK, this is the IP of that server. This is the SMTP ID. OK, and this is the IPv6 address. So all this information you can gather from a particular mail. OK, there is a huge source of inform information in it. OK, all these encryption algorithms and message signatures type. OK, so this is all about email footprinting you can gather all the uh, information about the about the email on in the header of the email okay so that's all for this video i guess you have understand thank you
Hello guys, welcome back. In this video, I am going to show you that how we can perform website, who is and DNS footprinting. Okay, so let's start. For website footprinting, I am going to use a tool that is HTTrack. Okay, so let's see what this tool does. Okay. Here is the tool. Okay. So what it will do first, let me explain you. It will just create a same exact copy and all the images and all the uh, .html stuff, .php stuff, it will collect and gather from that original website so that you can test on it. Okay. So let me show you how we can perform it. We will just click on next. We will set a project name. For example, let's take the name ZDUP. Okay. And let's click on next. We have to paste the URL of that organization or that company. Okay. So I'm going to type it here. HTTPS ZDUP.com. So after that, I'm going to click on next and again, next. Okay. So it will just start, uh, start its process and it will just type to try to gather all the uh, source pages and all the HTML pages and all the images, J JPG files, and it will gather all these information and it will take around 15 to 20 or 30 minutes, even depending on the length of the website. Okay. So let's wait for it to complete until that time while it will, it will, it will, it will, it is completing. And I'm going to show you that, uh, archive.org. Okay. It is a, a wayback machine. So just let me type this. So this is the URL of that archive.org. Okay. So it is a Wayback machine. What is a Wayback machine? It will just uh, show you the previous or ba back in the years, like uh, in, in what, what is the Google looks like in 2010 or 2005 or 2000. So we are going to sh see it here. Okay. So let's type google.com and hit.
so you can review the code here and you do not need to go to the website and view this page source you can just store it in your in your own system okay so this is the command for that that is wget okay so i guess uh, web website footprinting is all clear so now we will move to um who is lookup okay who is footprinting so what is who is footprinting let me go to google and type whois and hit enter so what is this i will click on it so who is uh, is provides us the information about the domain name okay so which the our website is hosted on which domain and what is the, what is the ip address of that uh, that that website okay so for example if i want to type z zdup.com and hit enter so it will just go to the uh, registration information of zdup okay so let's wait for it okay it is unavailable no problem we will go to another website that is who.is so here we will type um, zdup.com and hit enter so here is the sum of the information about is the who is information about zdub okay so what is the registrar information that registrar name what is this and who is server is who is dot dyn dyna dot com okay so this is the and this is the status okay and this is the important dates that is very important uh, because uh, this uh, this this tells us the when our uh, lease for this ip is going to expire so we have to just buy before that okay and it, uh, otherwise some other person can buy our ip or our domain okay so this is the uh, this is that uh, date this is the registered date and this is the up last update date okay and these are the name servers name servers are are used in dns records okay so these all information we have gathered and uh, some other information like uh, registrant contact details and uh, for example the organization address of that organization phone number email address okay so all these private information we have gathered using this who is okay so uh, this is uh, what is there in who is footprinting okay so now we will move to dns dns footprinting so let me clear this screen and for dns footprinting we are going to cover some tools like ns lookup so i will type ns lookup and i will write zdup.com okay i will hit enter and you will see some information like uh, this first of all let me clear that this is our information the the system's information okay it's a private address and this is the information that we have called like for zdub.com so uh, this is the information like uh, this is the private ip of that uh, public ip of that zdub this is all the public ip this is the ipv6 ip and this is also ipv6 ip okay so let me show you some more commands through which you can gather the dns information like ns lookup tag type equals to for example you want to gather name servers information so i am going to type ns and again i am going to type zdub.com i will hit enter and you will see some uh, name in name servers information that we have seen previously in who is also so these were the name servers that we have seen there okay so uh, this is the name of the name server okay there are some more commands like if i am going to it is ns and i am going to type mx so mx is mail exchange records so this is the mail exchange records and uh, this is the mail exchange server okay some other commands like if i just want to gather ipv6 address so i am going to type aaa and hit enter so this will just collect ipv6 address and for same for ipv4 address i am going to just erase three a's and just single a will 
tell me the ip v4 address okay i guess you have understand the use of this tool okay and one more thing we can also do that if we want to gather the ip address of this particular domain so i'm going to just copy it and i'm going to type ns lookup and uh, i am going to paste that okay oh it, it is not getting paste so let me type it here brad dot ns dot c l o u d f l a r e dot c o m and i'm going to hit enter and it will just show the information or ipv6 and ipv4 addresses of that name server okay so i guess you have understood how we can use ns lookup there is one more command that is let me clear the screen first the command name is host host okay so it will just uh, gather the ipv6 and ipv4 addresses of that website that we have just put for example zdub.com and i'm going to hit enter so you you can see that the ipv4 addresses ipv6 addresses and its uh, mail exchange addresses mail exchange servers okay so i guess you have understood how we can perform dns footprinting website footprinting and how we can perform uh, who is lookup okay so let me go to my st track the website is getting copied or mirrored so it is not finished yet let's wait for it to finish okay then i will show you what the what is the output of this result okay so let's wait so as you can see that the website is being mirrored okay so let's browse mirrored website let's click on it so you can see that as we have clicked on it and it just it, it just went to zip.com okay so this is what uh, the uh, ht track has mirrored the website okay so this is all for uh, this video and i hope that whole footprinting concept is clear to you all and now we will move to the second phase that is scanning so thank you hello guys welcome back in this video i am going to start our second phase of hacking that is network scanning so let's see what is network scanning and how we can perform it the question that comes first is what is network scanning Scanning is a process of gathering additional detailed information about target using highly complex and aggressive reconnaissance techniques. So, it is also a, some some sort of information that we gather in this phase also, but it mainly refers to the network information that we gather. Okay, so network scanning refers to a set of procedures used for identifying hosts, ports. os running on the target system and services in a particular network okay so network scanning refers to a set of procedure that identifies host okay so in this phase we will identify the live host on the networks open ports the os operating system that is running on the target system and what all are the services that are running in the network it is an important phase of intelligence gathering for an attacker which enables him or her to create a profile of the target organization so in this step we will also prepare a network map of the target organization so what are the objectives of network scanning it first discovers the network's live host ip addresses and open ports of the live host okay so it will first discover the live ne uh, networks live host like what all ips are currently live on the particular network and then we will just uh, scan the particular ips and we will get the information about the open ports on the live host okay we will also discover the operating system and system architecture of the target so we will also get the information about the operating system and the architecture of that target system we will discover the services running listening on the target system and we will also identify vulnerabilities in any network system so using some tools for of scanning we will gather all these information about our target system or a network okay 
let's move further to types of scanning so there are three types of scanning first is port scanning so the port scanning is the process of checking list of open ports and services running on the target system so as i told you that scanning is mainly focused on for port scanning only so it is a process of checking the list of open ports and the services running on the target system second is network scanning it's a procedure of identifying active host on the network and their ip addresses as i have earlier to told you that we will first identify live host on the on our network so so that we can uh, scan their uh, scan them and get the open ports list okay so uh, then last we have vulnerability scanning so it is a method of checking whether a system is exploitable by identifying its vulnerabilities so and uh, uh, after uh, after getting open ports we will also run a scan to gather the vulnerabilities of the target system so as we move further in the course of ethical hacking we have to gather some information about networking also so so as we move further i will gradually tell you something some net basic concepts of networking okay so first first of all is it is tcp ip communication so what is tcp and what is ip and what is the communication is that it stands for okay so first of all let me tell you tcp stands for transmission control protocol and ip stands for internet protocol so it is specifically designed as a model to offer highly reliable and end to end byte stream over an unreliable internet work okay so what is tcp ip communication it just create a reliable and a uh, reliable connection between a client and a server so so that they can communicate between them and they can share the packets between them okay so it is a first of all it is very reliable and it is connection oriented protocol also okay so these are some characteristics of tcp ip communication like it deliver it, it provides us the delivery acknowledgements okay then it performs retransmission of the packet if any packet is left behind then it performs retransmission of it it is a reliable connection and it it is very easy to get error okay so so uh, error detection okay so if any error occur in the tcp ip communication it will just uh, detect it and it will it will just retransmit it so that the receiver receives whole information in a single time okay so uh, example of tcp ip communication is uh, it is all about uh, like if we are if we are mailing someone or if we are messaging someone okay so the what happens when we send some the information then the receiver gathers all the information and collects it and then it shows to the receiver okay so this is all about tcp ip communication now we have tcp communication flags so what are the communication flags that are there in transmission control protocol okay or it uh, what flags tcp protocol uses so first is syn syn okay it is the synchronization flag which is used as a first step in establishing a three way handshake between two hosts okay so uh, what is in packet perform it it is a first packet that the a uh, sender sends to the receiver so that it can initiate the three way handshake i will discuss three way handshake in the next slide okay second step is AC, second flag is ack that is acknowledgement the acknowledgement flag is used to acknowledge the successful received of a packet so it will just acknowledge the received of the previous packet that any uh, sender or receiver sent to the to each other okay third is fin the finished uh, the fin fin means finish okay the finish flag means there is no more data from the sender okay so when the sender has nothing to share or nothing to send it will just send a fin packet and the connection terminates fourth is urg that is urgent the urgent flag is used to notify the receiver to process the urgent packets before processing all other packets so as the name suggests it is the urgent packet that the sender sends to the receiver and the uh, and the processing of uh, urgent packet performs at most priority okay then we have push packet the push is somewhat similar to urg 
that is urgent flag but it just tells the receiver to process these packets as they are received instead of buffering them actually a uh, process uh, every packet uh, goes through a process of buffering so if we send a packet that contains P psh that is push then it will not buffer and it will just shoot it to to, to the receiver side the final packet is rst that is reset when there is an error in the connection the connection is aborted in the response to the error okay so when there is an error in the connection then the sender sends the uh, rst packet and the receiver receives it and it will just abort the connection okay so let's move further so now as i told you that we will discuss three way handshake so what is it what is the three way handshake i will just now tell you okay a tcp connection is established with the help of a three way handshake it is a process of initiating and acknowledging a connection once the connection is established data transfer begins and when the transmission is finished the connection is terminated by the by the closing of an established virtual circuit so as i have here mentioned that there are three packets that is sent in the three way handshake that is sin then sin ack and ack so let me go to my paint screen and i will just show you what all are these okay so let's see let's uh, take an example like this is the sender okay so i will denote it by s and uh, this is the receiver side so i will denote it by r okay so this is sender and this is receiver so uh, first the sender sends a packet which contains a flag that is syn okay this uh, that i told you that is called synchronization okay so this flag initiates the connection okay then the receiver in reply to the syn packet send the sends an acknowledgement of the syn packet so it will send syn syn and slash ack so it will acknowledge the previous syn packet okay let me write it okay hmm so uh, the send, uh, receiver sends this packet okay and the final packet that is sent by uh, sender is the acknowledgement for the acknowledgement of the previous syn ack packet okay so this is the whole process of three way handshake i hope you understand that after this three way handshake the communication established and the then they share the information between each other okay so this is this is whole mm, considered as three way handshake okay i guess you have understand okay so let's move further so what are port numbers so uh, there are different port numbers ranging from 0 to 65535 okay so these all are the port numbers that our system or our uh, computer or our laptop supports okay so these ports are used for different services and th they are just uh, provided to those services okay so there are three categories of port numbers first is well known ports second are registered ports and third are dynamic ports so what all what is well known ports it ranges from 0 to 1023 these are the ports that are provided to particular services as you can see here in the image that there are some all these ports are well known ports that are provided to particular protocols okay then there are register ports that ranges from 1024 to 49151 and then we have dynamic ports that that ranges from 49152 to 65535 so register ports are used by the by our system to to initiate a connection between r and the server okay so these are the random ports that we took for those connections and dynamic ports are generally used for experiments okay so uh, these are the port numbers that are very much required and you should learn these port numbers like 20 and 21 for ftp 22 for ssh 23 for telnet and as it goes to last, last that is 514 for syslog so you must remember all all these common ports and these are the transport protocol that it supports like uh, ftp uses tcp ssh use, uses tcp dns uses tcp and udp dhcp uses udp and as it goes to syslog uses udp okay so let's move further now we have scanning tools what are the tools that we use to perform scanning okay the first tool is nmap 
NMAP stands for Network Mapper. It is the most powerful security scanner for network exploration and hacking. So it is the best tool that everyone will suggest to perform scanning. Okay. It allows us to discover host ports and services on a computer system, thus creating a map of the network. Okay. So it will help you to map. It will help you to build a map of the network by discovering host ports and services on a computer system. Okay. Then it, uh, the NMAP includes many mechanism for port scanning, OS detection, version detection, ping sweep and vulnerability scanning. So these are the functions that NMAP performs. Okay. So it will just uh, discover the open ports. It will detect the OS version and it will detect the version of a particular service. It will also perform ping sweep and it will provide as a vulnerability report of also. Okay. So what is the syntax of using NMAP? NMAP is just uses, uh, used like NMAP, then we have to uh, uh, provide some functions or options or uh, flags and then the target IP address. Okay, so we will see it in the uh, practical session that how we can scan through NMAP. Now let's move to HPing3, a second tool that we will use to perform scanning. So HPing3 is a command line oriented network scanning and network scanning tool and packet crafting tool that sends ICMP echo requests. Okay. So it is basically a packet crafting tool, which helps us to craft or build some packets or build some crafted packets so that that we can send it to the target system and it will perform the task that is that is for for which it is sent. Okay. So it performs network security auditing, firewall testing, remote uptime guessing, and TCP IP stack auditing. So it will perform various tasks. And one of the tasks that it performs is the is used for uh, DOS attack also. Okay. So uh, here we have uh, in this HPing3, we have the flag that is used for DOS attack also. We will see in the uh, that in the DOS module. Okay. So the, what is the syntax of using HPing3? Okay. So it, we will just write HPing3, then we will write options, and then we will provide the target IP address. Okay. Now we have the third tool that is ZenMap. It is for Windows user. Okay. The NMAP and uh, HPing3 were for uh, Linux and this is for Windows. Okay. And Linux also. So ZenMap is official NMAP security scanner GUI. Okay. So it is a GUI version of NMAP. It is a multi-platform. As I told you that it will work on Linux, Windows and Mac OS, etc. Okay. It is free and open source application, which aims to make NMAP easy for beginners to use while providing advanced features for experienced NMAP users. So it is very user friendly for beginners and for advanced users also. So we will see all these tools in our practical session. So let's move further. So what are the port scan types? So what are the scanning uh, port scanning types? So how we uh, which means that how we can in uh, through which techniques we can just scan the ports in the target system okay so the first is tcp connect full open scan it detects when a port is open after completing the three-way handshake and it tears it down with the reset packet okay so it will just complete the full tcp scan to a three-way handshake and then it will uh, show us the results of the scan okay so it is very easy to detect, but most reliable. Okay. Obviously it will, as it will perform a three way handshake. So it is easy to detect by the target organization, but it, it will be more reliable, more, more reliable. Okay. So the flag, which we will use to perform TCP connect is dash S and capital T. We will see it in the practical session. Second is stealth or half open scan. So it detects when a port is open after sending SYN packet and then TS is tears it down with the reset packet. Okay. So it will just send a SYN packet and then it will show us the results. Okay. So it is very useful for hiding efforts and evading firewalls. So the flag that will perform stealth scan is dash S small s and then capital S. Okay. So let's move further to third type that is inverse TCP scan. Okay, so attacker sends packet with TCP flag like fin or URG and push set or with no flags. 
where no response implies that the port is open whereas a reset packet response means that the port is closed so we will perform this by using dash capital dash small s and capital n for null scan and for fin scan we will use dash small s and capital f fourth is ac flag probe scan attacker sent packets with a with an ac flag to a remote device and then analyze the header information that is ttl that is time to live and window field to to receive rst packets to determine if the port is open or closed so it is as simple as that and we will use a dash s and capital a flag to perform it and the final type is udp scanning so uh, all, previous all four one were for tcp and this is for udp okay so the attacker sends a udp packet to the target system if that system does not respond with the message then the port is open and if the system responds with an icmp port unreachable message then the port is closed so it is as simple as that and we will use dash small s and capital u flag to perform udp scanning don't worry we will see all these practicals in the next videos okay so uh, next we have ids and firewall evasion techniques so uh, what are the techniques through which we can evade uh, firewalls or bypass firewalls and ids systems ids are intrusion detection system okay so uh, first is packet fragmentation fragment packet fragmentation just relates to the uh, dividing the packets into many smaller pieces and then sending it to the receiver side then we have source routing source routing is just changing the ip address or the uh, ip address of the source okay so that it will not detect it then we have source port manipulation we can also change the ports uh, for example if the firewall is uh, uh, blocking the ports at um, for example 5000 port so we will just change the port and then we will perform the scan next is ip address decoy ip address decoy means if i if the target system is blocking our ip so we can we can use multiple other ips uh, to perform the scan so it will it will just uh, scan with the each ip that we provide okay then we have ip address spoofing if we want to uh, ip address spoofing relates to the ip address that is our ip address we will just first change our ip address and we will spoof it and then we will perform scanning okay then we have proxy servers proxy servers are the intermediary servers through which our request is sent to the receiver the first uh, first we will send the request to the proxy server and then the proxy server will send the request to the receiver so that the receiver uh, sees that the request the, sees the request come from proxy server not from us so the proxy so we are hidden behind the proxy server so our real identity will not reveal and then we have anonymizers anonymizers are the uh, softwares or the hardware devices that are there in our system and then we will just um, use them to spoof our ip or to change our ip to another location ip okay so it will also hide our uh, information and then we can perform scanning and we can through all these techniques we can evade firewalls and ids so at last we have port scanning countermeasures so what are the countermeasures that we can implement to prevent ourselves from port scanning the first is configure firewall and ids rules to detect and block probes okay then we have ensured that the routers ids firewalls firmware are updated to their latest versions update is the key to success okay so we just provide e, uh, firmware updates to all these devices then ensure that anti scanning and anti spoofing rules are properly configured if we want to uh, prevent ourselves from ip spoofing and ip decoy so we have to just uh, ensure that the anti scanning and anti spoofing rules are properly configured and the final is use a custom rule set to lock down the network and block unwanted ports at the firewall so it is very good practice to unblock unwanted ports at the firewall because it will just um, provide more security to our target organization that is behind the firewall okay i guess all the concepts i have covered on the, of scanning and now we will see the practical aspects of scanning how we can perform scanning using nmap hping3 and zenmap thank you
Hello guys, welcome back. In this video, I am going to demonstrate that how we can use Nmap, the most powerful tool to perform scanning. So it's practical time. Let's see how we can use Nmap. So for Nmap to use, first of all, we need a vulnerable website. So it's a disclaimer from my side that we cannot perform scanning using Nmap or other tool on live websites or live systems. First of all, we have to take permission from that owner and then we can only perform the scanning. Okay. So I am using this vulnerable machine that is Metasploitable 2 as my target. Okay. So I am going to perform scanning on this vulnerable machine so that you can understand how to perform scanning. So the IP address of it is 192.168.1.103. So I'm going to use this IP address to perform scanning. Okay, so for uh, to perform scanning, I am I am going to use Kali Linux. Okay, cause Nmap is a tool that will work on Kali Linux only. Okay, so it is a command line tool actually. Okay, so first of all, I will type Nmap tag h to bring the help menu. Okay, so it is a very awesome tool. You can see a lots of command here. Okay, so I am going to show you which commands are very much uh, hand handy you should you should take them handy okay so let's start with the first scan type that we have discussed that is tcp connect okay all full scan so for that i i have told you that which flag we will use that is s and t okay and then we will provide the ip that is 192.168.1.103 okay the ip of meta exploitable 2 our vulnerable machine we will hit enter and see what are the results okay so you can see that the results are here first of all it will tell you the number of the uh, the version of nmap that is nmap 7.80 okay so it will tell you the host is up and then it will show you the open ports okay that is which all ports are open okay so you can see that 21 is open 22 is open 23 24 53 and gradually you can move to 8180 okay and these are the services that are running on these ports like FTP, SSH, Telnet, SMTP and all these services are running on the, um, the, the particular port. Okay. So this is how we can perform ST scan that is TCP connect scan. So the, in the back end, what has happened? The three way handshake has happened. Okay. And then we have, we are just seeing the results. Okay. And you can also see that we can see the Mac address of the virtual machine that is the metasploitable 2 that is 08 and this is the mac address of that virtual machine okay so now we will go to the our second scan type that was stealth scan okay for that we will just change st to ss okay and i will hit enter so you can see that the results are exactly exactly the same but the methodology is changed in this scan uh, the the sender just sent the sin packet and got the results okay so it's a stealthy scan so you can see the same results as you have seen in the previous scan okay so for next i will go i'm going to use the fin scan okay so and this is the inverse tcp scan and i'm going to hit enter and see what are the results that it shows okay so you can see there's a one difference in this and it is it is a little bit confused between open and filtered okay filtered means the the firewall is there okay the firewall is monitoring on the on that port okay so, and it is also telling that it the port is open okay so using fin scan it will it has just sent the fin packet and got the results from the target system okay and the mac address it's it's common in the all the scan type okay so let's um, perform our next scan that is the uh, the os detection this is a new one okay so you must write it down so we will just hit the capital o okay for it so it will just detect the os version of the target system okay so i will hit enter and see what is the os detection which os is that uh, meta exploitable to running okay so you can see that the port scanning the port scanning is a uh, port scanning is all same similar to the previous scans okay but the new newer things are these 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 are the uh, newer information that we have gathered like the run, uh, running machine that is linux 2.0 uh, 2.6.x okay 
and you can see that the OS details is Linux 2.6.92, 2.6.33. Okay. And it is one hop away. Okay. So these are information it has gathered using the OS scan operating system detection scan. Okay. Now we will move to service version detection. Okay. That is the version detection scan. Or you can also use this to grab the banner. Okay. So banners, banners are the, uh, the, uh, written code written uh, something string like structure or something message or the versions of in the in the target system or the network okay so grabbing all these banners are is called banner grabbing so we will perform banner grabbing using this flag that is small s and capital v so it is for version detection i will hit enter and it will take a little more time than the previous scans cause it will gather a lot more information. So we will just wait a little bit and then we will able to see the results. As you can see that here's the results and what is the extra part that you are able to see that is version. Okay. So you, uh, this is uh, for example, if the 21 TCB port is open, that is uh, FTP port. Okay. And so it has told us a version a version number that uh, which FTP version is running on that on that system okay so you can see all these uh, version informations about the target system okay and um, besides their port okay so it is also a very uh, useful scan type that is a version detection now we will perform the acknowledge scan okay I have already told you that how we can perform it just we will replace V by A capital A to perform acknowledge scan so let's hit enter and the scan is completed and you can see that the host is up and all thousand scanned ports on this are unfiltered okay so it has just told us that the ports are unfiltered and no firewall is monitoring over the ports okay so this is the this is just the information that acknowledge flag has got to us okay and the final type of scan that I'm going to show you is capital A, just capital A. OK, so what this will do, it will take a lot of time. It It is the combination of different types of flags. OK, so A stands for all. So it will take a lot of time to uh, discover or the open ports or the services running or the vulnerabilities or the service version or the OS detection, everything it will gather and show show it to us. OK. So we will just wait a little bit for it to complete and then we will able to see the results of that scan. OK. So as you can see that the scan is completed and here's a lot of information about the target system. So what is it all about? Let's see. First, the port is open, the service and its version. OK, so all these things are live. OK. And then we have the FTP information, the uh, vulnerable, vulnerability information, the uh, related to this VSFTPD 2.3.4. Okay, so this is the information regarding to this uh, FTP, uh, FTP service. Okay, and uh, gradually you can see all other information like SSH and uh, SMTP. There is some related to their its vulnerability and. Uh, all this information you can see and monitor that uh, that nmap provide provided us okay so this is all about the uh, scanning using nmap i guess you have understood all the flags and it's working and i hope you enjoyed the video okay so i guess you can uh, relate to with the uh, the part that we have covered in the theoretical part okay so let's now we will in the next video we will see how we can use hping 3 uh, for scanning. Thank you. Hello guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you that how we can use HPing 3, a packet crafting tool to perform scanning. Okay. So let's see what is HPing 3. Okay. So in this terminal, I'm going to use, I'm going to uh, show you some commands to use HPing 3. Okay. So, uh, you can, you have already seen my target that is Metasploitable. Okay. It is a vulnerable machine that I'm targeting. Okay. So let's go to my Kali machine and see what, what are the commands 
of hping3 okay so let me type hping3 space dash h for help menu so there are different types of flags that we can use and different packet crafting techniques that we can use to craft our packets and then send to the target system okay so let's uh, start with our first command that is first let me clear this screen okay now let me type my first command that is hping3 space dash s capital s is for sin packet so it will just send the sin packets okay now i will type the ip 192.168.1.103 i will put a space then i will tag p this is for port number we can just put a single port number also for example let's try for 23 and then we can use a flag that is dash c it is for counting of number of terms let's first let me show you what this does then we will go to next okay so as you can see that uh, we are getting some information and it is keep on going 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 and going until i stop until i press ctrl c okay to stop it okay so you can see that uh, we are getting some information regarding s port that is the uh, port that, that we are targeting okay so we are targeting 23 and uh, it is open how i know it is open because of the window size if the window size is zero then the port is closed and if window size shows some value other than zero then the uh, port is open okay so now let me uh, use the same command and i will use des c to uh, to send counted number of packets for example is in this you can see that it has sent it 11 packets okay so you can see it here okay so uh, what i'm going to do i'm going to put a limit to it okay so i will it will just send five packets and then it will stop okay so let's see what it does one two three four and five okay i hope you understand this okay the dash c is for the uh, to put a limit onto the number of packets that is sent to the target system okay now i will show you the second command that is in this i will use plus plus for example and i will just change it to 20 okay so what this will do let me remove this limit so what this will do it will just start from 20 and keep on going and going until i stop it okay so it will just first it will scan 20th port if it is open then it will just show the window size and it will it if it is will be closed then it will just show the window size is zero okay so let me put let me hit enter and see what are the results that we are getting here okay so i will uh, keep i will let it go for um, 10 to 12 packets and then i will stop it so that you can understand it better okay so i can i can stop it now okay so you can see that i have stopped it so uh, there are different packets for example the port 20 the window size is 0 so it is closed port 21 the window size is something so it is open port 22 is open port 23 is closed likewise you can move further okay so this is the second step second command that you can use in hping3 and there is one more command that we can use that is hping3 dash 8 dash 8 is for udp scan okay it is for just normal scan not udp it is just for normal scan so we have to provide a range here okay for example if i am providing 0 to 100 so it is the range of the port that i am providing okay I will use dash s for sin packets and I will use the same IP that is my target IP not 103. So I will hit enter and okay the hping3 is not correct so I will just put a g here and I will hit enter. So you can see that it is in the table tabular form okay so it has just captured all those packets which have some window value and the rest it has ignored okay so you can see that the 21 ftp is open 22 is ssh 23 25 50 and 80 as we have seen in nmap also so all these ports are open and rest ports are closed okay so this is how we can perform scanning using hping3 so i guess you have understood the phases of the uh, tools of hacking or uh, tools of scanning okay so this is all for this video now we will move to the Zen map part in the next video. Okay, so thank you.
hello guys welcome back in this video i am going to demonstrate that how we can use zen map on windows systems to perform scanning so let's see how we can use zen map okay first of all we need to download zen map okay so we will go to the official website of nmap that is nmap.org and here we will find zen map okay so we will go to the downloads option and we will just click on the link to download it so here is the link to download nmap zen map okay and we have to download npcap that is nmap packet capture okay so we have to download this also to capture the packets of nmap okay so it is a supporting file for the use of zen map on windows okay so we will install both of these as you will download all these packets and you will just install them you will be able to use zen map okay so i will just open the zen map okay so it is the gui version of nmap so it, this is how it looks okay so we will just use uh, this to perform scanning okay so which device am, am i scanning okay so here's a disclaimer that you cannot perform scanning on live websites or live machines before the uh, permission of the owner okay so uh, i am just disclaiming it again that you cannot perform scanning on the live websites before the permission of the owner okay so you have to um, you have to take the permission and then you can perform scanning okay so i am performing the scan on an uh, vulnerable machine that is meta exploitable 2 okay so this is uh, i have just uh, switched it on on the um, on my virtual machine and i am performing the scanning on this okay so i will just type its ip okay so what is the ip of this that is 192.168.1.103 okay so i will just write the ip here 192.168.1.103 okay i will click here and there are some profiles and options that which type of scan we want to perform okay so let's start with a quick scan okay so i will click on quick scan and you can see the command is also written here so it will perform this command okay so i will just click on scan and let's wait for the results okay so you can see that which ports are open so you can see the whole information about ports is written okay like 21 is open that is ftp 22 is open that is ssh 23 25 like likewise 111 and it goes to 8009 okay so all these ports are open in the uh, target machine and all these services are running that is ftp ssh telnet and so all this information is very crucial for attacker so these are the ways or the doors and windows toward towards the towards his system okay so he can enter uh, into the target system using these ports okay so let's go to another port scan type that is intense scan let's see what it um, it looks like and what it performs okay so it just keep on uh, increasing and increasing and it will just show uh, it will just gradually show the results okay so you can see the command of intense scan is this and uh, you can see all these uh, ports are open in the target system okay one thing to mention that there are some flags which starts from t okay so like dash t4 dash t4 is for uh, these are the flags like dash t0 dash t1 dash t2 dash t3 dash t4 dash t5 so all these six types of t's or the t6 type of these flags are used to perform the intense scan or you can say that how fast you want to perform the scan so t0 is the slowest scan and t5 is the fastest scan okay so uh, you must keep in mind that to evade or to be stealthy or to be uh, anonymized into the uh, into the target system you have to just perform as slow as you can okay so uh, it is a very good pra good practice to perform uh, the scan at t0 or t1 okay but it will take a lot of time to perform the to complete the scan okay so as you can see the results are here and all these ports are open okay so I guess you have understood how we can use ZenMap to perform scanning. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope you understand. Okay, thank you.